Who doesn't like a good bike lane? Oh, you think maybe these drivers? Yeah, they probably get a little annoyed to see bikes cruising past them as they inch forward. But most everyone can appreciate a road design that gives cars and bikes some separate space. And frankly, it's good for drivers too, to know where bikes are most likely to be, sharing space only at intersections, driveways, etc. So then, bike lane equals good, and no bike lane equals bad, right? Well, not exactly, because not all bike lanes are created equal. And in fact, as a person on a bike, you might sometimes want to choose a route without any bike lane at all. In this video, I'll share what I consider to be the four primary categories of bike lanes, and a couple tips for how to find the good ones, the great ones, and the truly life-changing ones. What, too much? Okay, let's proceed. Hi, you thought this was going to be category one, didn't you? You know you did. Well, before we get into the four categories, I want to take a minute to quickly cover all those roads without any specific bike markings. Point to point is nothing if not inclusive. Interestingly, this category has almost as much variability as all the other bike lane categories combined. In urban areas, major arterial roads are focused on vehicle traffic and are typically designed without bike lanes. Cars and trucks travel at higher speeds, which is already fun if you're on a bike a few feet away, but sometimes you'll get really lucky and have a lane closed abruptly or a truck loading or unloading. Nothing gets the blood pumping quite like merging into vehicle traffic. Getting stuck behind traffic that's not moving, also fun. Even most experienced bikers generally want to avoid these roads. On the other side of the spectrum though are quiet, wide side streets with lots of trees, stop signs, and limited traffic. Some of the best routes without bike lanes are on one-way residential streets where you don't even have any oncoming traffic. These are perfect for family bike rides and for those riders not yet confident in riding with traffic. Look, no surprises, it's really category one. A minor step above a completely unmarked street, this is where the city or state has designated a certain route as being good for bikes, but without actually creating any specific space for bikes. Sometimes these routes connect other areas with bike lanes or bike paths, where it's the most logical place for bikes in between often marked simply by a couple small street signs and the dreaded sharrows. Oh, the sharrows. These basically say to drivers, hey, you might see a bike around here, but don't worry, the road still belongs to you. All right, it's time to break out some paint. We see a lot of variation in this category as well, but the tie that binds them all together is that the level of street adjustment is limited to paint only. Sometimes this means squeezing a thin lane in between parked cars and moving traffic, with no buffers on either side. That can be fine on a quieter street, or it can feel really uncomfortable to some bike riders on a busy street. Other versions of the striped lane add a small buffer zone on the side with parked cars, providing a bit of protection from opening doors. Still others buffer both sides. There's nothing to prevent cars or trucks from encroaching on the space, especially delivery vehicles of all kinds, but at least some space is intended to be used primarily by bicycles. Even better is this example in Chicago, where buffered lanes on Wells Street get a green wave feature, with lights timed to a bike-friendly 12 miles per hour. Now we're getting to the good stuff. Going beyond simple paint, these lanes offer some level of other protection, either with plastic bollards or concrete. A lane can also be protected when it's set in between parked vehicles and the curb, even if most of the design relies on paint. These types of lanes have become much more prominent in U.S. cities over the past several years and are possible when a road goes on a road diet, cutting out a lane of traffic in favor of one or more bike lanes. Another variant of protected bike lanes creates a two-way lane on a one-way street. The fancy term for this is contraflow, in case you're into fancy terms. The touch would laugh at us here in the U.S. because they have so many of these types of bike paths. We in the U.S. have relatively few, usually in more suburban or rural areas, along water, or on old rail routes. Still, we're making progress, and whenever you find yourself on one of these, you can relax knowing that your interactions with vehicles will be limited. One of Chicago's civic gems is the Lakefront Trail, providing 18 miles of lakeside access to parks, museums, beaches, stadiums, and about a dozen neighborhoods. Over the past few years, it's been improved by the Navy Pier flyover, eliminating bike and vehicle conflict around Navy Pier. 
In most sections, bikers have been further separated from runners and walkers, doubling the space for both sets of lakefront users. New York's Empire State Trail is another great example, starting in Battery Park and heading all the way up the west side of Manhattan. There are quite a few street crossings, especially in lower Manhattan, but for how dense this area is, the designers did a great job. An example of great off-street bike infrastructure in a less dense setting is Boulder, Colorado, with bike paths, bridges, and tunnels almost everywhere, even connecting 30 miles to Denver. So that's great. Four categories. Now how do you find the high quality ones? Category three and preferably category four. First, if you live in a major metro area or are traveling to one, chances are that the city has some sort of bike coalition or a group of fanatics that eat, drink, and sleep bicycle issues. Reach out to this group to see if they have guidance on the best bike routes in town. You'll probably also find an online map detailing the areas of various bike infrastructure. If you're really lucky and you live in a place like Chicago, then you may even find a customized map that improves on the city's official one. Chicago's Mellow Map, I'll link it in the description, offers tips for finding some of those secret, quiet streets without bike lanes. And of course, our old friend Google Maps can come in handy. Toggling the layers can show trails, dedicated lanes, and bike-friendly streets. And using Street View, you can put your virtual boots on the ground. Just remember to check the timestamps, because in just a couple years, things can change a lot. And a street that once catered to cars can get an upgrade, making it a great option for all modes of transportation. Maybe even a life-changing one. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider subscribing or leave a comment on where you'd like to ride or what you'd like to see in future videos. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.